Well, hello. Um, thanks for staying here. I hope you all liked the movie. I thought it was uh, quite um, cheering. Um, so we're here together for the last panel of today and the last session of the campus, Fix Europe, um, with a title for our panel that is What Role for Transnational Collective Action? We've discussed a lot along these last few days about collective action, about social mobilization, about what we can do to change Fix Europe um, as activists, as citizens in general. Um, and I think it's, uh, it, we thought it would be interesting to consider more in details um, what, what role and what other experiences um, of collect transnational collective actions we could take inspirations from. Um, so today with us, um, we have Igor Stix, who is a scholar, I think I can use this word, um, <laughs> working on European citizenship um, and with a strong focus on the Balkans, if I may. Um, you've been, uh, you're editing a, a book soon that is not published yet, but it's coming up um, on Welcome to the Desert of Post-Socialism, Radical Politics After Yugoslavia. So we will have some insight in this region as well. Uh, and more generally, and, uh, and Beppe Gaccia is with us. Uh, he was graduating in philosophy and political sciences, and he's been uh, a strong, no, a strong corner in social European social movements in uh, in Italy, um, and he's been an active citizen, uh, an active representative uh, in the city of Venice. Um, Social Affairs Committee and uh, as a member of the municipality, as a councillor. Um, and he's got a project called Global Project, who he may uh, give a few words about. So to approach the question of transnational action and the role of transnational mobilization, we thought um, we would start with a like, question of scale. Because uh, we always like we've discussed the the, the scale of the city, uh, the interlinking or inter intertwining between local, national, and transnational spaces, European and more global. Um, we have discussed in the previous panel about the state and uh, whether the state was still a viable um, scale to work at. Um, so I would like to ask Igor and uh, Beppe, maybe um, what you think is, what, like at which scale you think, what, what kind of action at which, at which scale you think makes sense in the current context? Well, I, th I think uh, definitely uh, scale is important. It, it depends. Um, what you are stri struggling for. If it's, uh, it's a local issue that could mobilize local community, clearly it will happen at, a, at the level of municipality or maybe city, which is already another scale. And, and as we know, in, um, in, in big cities, uh, big cities like London are, are, are much more powerful than many, many other states. On the other hand, there are things that could be regulated only by states. And out there we have a problem again of scale. Um, we have very small states that cannot really run their affairs and that are not independent or sovereign. In Scotland we had a lot of debates about this, what, what independence really means. And uh, can, you, can you fix, now you have fixed Europe, can you fix UK? And if you cannot fix it, uh, the, the argument was, well, actually we cannot have what we want. We cannot have real democracy in the UK we should rather have a smaller unity which will be more democratic. So that was, for instance, one of the arguments of the yes campaign, especially, especially not the general yes campaign, but the radical yes campaign that you, you might be interested in. Um, of course, the question was then, uh, how do you intend to, 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 uh, to, to struggle against, against uh, neoliberal global capital? Uh, do we need a larger state and then reform UK in order to struggle against it? Or actually you can do it in a smaller unit? And these questions 
uh, remain open. And, and uh, when we talk about scale, global, cl clearly ecological issues, climate change and so on, cannot be solved by any state, regardless of its capacity. Uh, uh, and it has, you have to find a global answer to this. So I think that, that citizenship does differ um, uh, depending on, on scale. Uh, the question, of course, uh, as you mentioned, and, and uh, I had the chance to, to listen a bit, you've been concentrated on a, on a, on a state, uh, and you mentioned something very important, which is city, some sort of uh, uh, a urban citizenship, that, which is basically how majority of us experience citizenship at everyday level. National citizenship is already a bit elusive. Yeah? You don't really... Again, coming back to the UK, House of Lords... Um, uh, parliament, the way how we elect our representatives, it's already a bit elusive and somewhere uh, uh, very far away, not to mention uh, European level. Uh, so is city maybe, are we, for instance, I would just put this for our discussion, are we going back to some kind of a new, um, can we think about in this global configuration about some kind of uh, municipal democracies or urban democracies, uh, uh, actually. Um, and is this a way, way to go? Should we reform our cities and then, then states or, uh, and simply think about how we negotiate the, these different scales? Maybe democratic renew renewal will come out of a of course, formula that we don't have, how to balance all these skills from local to subnational, national, and then transnational. Okay, thank you, Igor. Uh, maybe, Pepe, before you uh, continue on these points, I can, um, I would invite you to uh, give us, of course, your experience of um, working at a city, city scale, but also, um, I think European Alternatives has taken uh, the position uh, since its uh, formation that uh, it is worth working at the European level um, when one speaks about uh, mobilization, social movements and claims and uh, about demands for political change, uh, not only because, um, because, well, they're, they're big, they're because there is there there is a possibility to act on some of the global uh, questions at the European level, um, despite all the problems with the uh, European democracy. So I wonder if you can also go into that direction. Uh, thank you for that question. Because uh, I think that uh, I and most of us uh, learn in the past uh, ten years. Uh, from the work uh, of uh, Saskia Sassen, which are uh, the specific uh, characters uh, of uh, the contemporary forms of sovereignty and how the contemporary form of sovereignty are so different uh, if compared uh, to the national state uh, sovereignty we classically know. And that definition of uh, assemblages resembling much more the forms of Middle Age sovereignty, I think, uh, are very interesting also in the understanding the processes going on on European scale. That means, for example, I think we have uh, to be skeptical about the idea to reoccupy the state. If the state uh, is something uh, very, very different uh, from the national sovereign state, uh, our fathers, our grandfathers, uh, and uh, all uh, <laughs> the heritage knew. In that sense, uh, it's interesting to use the European social and political space uh, precisely because uh, this is uh, an uh, undefined space, an uh, unfinished work. That means, for sure, that uh, a constitutional process uh, from above is going on. 
that is undemocratic, uh, post-democratic, and we know everything about uh, the lack of democracy and the way in which, uh, for example, uh, this is a process of re-centralization of uh, governmental functions. This is, for example, the experience uh, in uh, city governments. Everybody knows uh, about uh, the policy of cats. Everybody knows about uh, the effects of uh, the application of uh, European Stability Pact to the local uh, public finances. But uh, what uh, sometimes is missed is that uh, is not just a problem of budgeting. It's not just a problem of lack of money. It's not just a problem of uh, the necessity to cut uh, municipal welfare because of the state uh, shortage and European shortage of uh, financial resources. It's mainly a problem of uh, reducing the effective space of self-government. -gover reducing the effective space of self-determination on local level by the local communities, reducing the space of local real autonomy. From the other side, the fact that the European process of constitutionalization is not finished, is not perfectly defined, I think, opens a lot of space for the initiative from below. Uh, makes this space really interesting as a space of possible constituent process from below, as a space that is an open battlefield, and we have to be in this battlefield and uh, to fight our own battle. Okay, well that uh, leads us in a difficult territory, um, but I think we could try to see, um, well maybe how we could fight this battlefield and how today the social uh, movement or by transnational actions, um, one could put the germs of a new bottom-up democracy and uh, what are the different means. I think one could, uh, one could start, for instance, with um, examples, very practical examples, um, if you want to, or maybe with more uh, general considerations. But I think if you have some examples of uh, transnational movements and mobilization that can give a hope and inspiration for more mobilization and action uh, to change um, the functioning of the European democracy today, that would be great. You know, I, I think this, is a, uh, this invites us all to think about examples, because definitely we need examples. We, um, uh, of course, we, we know, you know we, we, we are here to discuss and talk and, and so on, but they are, uh, we, we have to see how things uh, might work in practice. So when you, when you, you are asking me this question, what f comes first to my mind are... Um, these, um, you know, trans transnational somehow transnational solidarity or transnational communications, if not a transnational movement. So what comes to my mind the first is how a movement in Italy to protect water inspired, for instance, cre Croatian activists. Um, how the movement to um, uh, to fight the privatization of of highways and infrastructure in Italy and other countries again inspired. Um, current movement to save uh, public assets in Croatia, for instance. Uh, or how, clearly how the Indignados, uh, the, the whole movement of Indignados uh, was pa pan-European and had similar, uh, uh, similar um, uh, forms and similar demands. Uh, uh, also, I, um, the third thing that, that, that is around here is the student, the European student movement that 
again has uh, international uh, 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 resonances. So the Chilean example being quite, quite Im- important for, for, for everybody else. And even now people are studying this to figure out how you move from, from a very successful student movement directly into politics. So probably you know that, that some of the um, personalities from the Chilean student movements are now members of the parliament where they want to continue their struggle to for free education and transformation of Ch- Chilean society. And the, the questions are always the same, you find in the practice. You start with the horizontality and then you see problems, then you try to k- somehow uh, find effective solutions to concrete situations where you can preserve horizontality or a spirit of horizontality, but at the same time be effective. So those are the old old problems we have, uh, especially we, when we talk about radical democracy and, and radical dra- uh, democratization, whether horizontality will, de- will end up in complete impotence or you'll actually build up a structure that will necessarily uh, 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 need to be less horizontal, maybe more, more uh, hierarchical, but organizationally more successful. Now, th- there is a, uh, um, when I mentioned the, the, the Indignados movement, uh, or probably question you, you discuss here, what do we do with Podemos, for instance? Yeah? Is it, are we going to, it, can this be replicated elsewhere? Can this be replicated in Italy or, or, or so somewhere else or in any other, other country? How it will develop, whether it will develop in a classic party uh, uh, at one point? And again, what, what, what are we going to do with the example of Syriza, which brings us back to the question, can we go through the institutions? Yeah? And uh, uh, I've been quite, quite, um, of, of course, this is uh, something that came back over the last five years to the table, uh, and there is there is two questions that, uh, that 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 I think we have to answer in order to understand what is going on. Where is this huge gap between movements, activists, bottom-up organization, grass, grass, grassroots movements, and institutions as they are? Uh, so on one hand, you have a problem within movements that people simply mistrust institutions, don't want to go into institutions. Um, um, think that maybe they could change things from the outside or uh, that they might just do the pressure on people who are actually doing the political work to change. There is also fear of of dirty hands of politics. Um, You know, beautiful souls like to go to the squares and to to, 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 uh, citizens' assemblies, but would never actually do the work you did. For instance, go into municipality and now work on concrete issues because this means politics, this means being contaminated by institutions, and this eventually means, you know, dirty hands, to dirty your hands. So it's much easier to be a scholar, you know, or go to conferences, or, or be an activist and find your space uh, in a civil society than to actually go directly into politics, either institutional one or outside the institutional one, which then come, might come uh, as some sort of a revolutionary and even extra-legal uh, type of political organization. On the other hand, maybe people do want to take responsibility, but institutions are doing everything to, to, to keep them at bay. And I think that both is somehow happening, and, and that we'll need to find the answer to, to both questions in order to move on. Um, yeah, no, uh, th- thanks, thanks, Igor. I was um, thinking, Beppe, if I could ask, um, because there was something uh, in uh, Stasia Sasson's uh, presentation when she, uh, at some moment, she mentioned um, how um, do we access the right channels uh, for, like, to, to have an impact on uh, government agendas. In some ways, um, it made me think. Well, I think it's a it's a it's a relevant question, and that's the one you would uh, you would ask. Well, how do we get into the institution to be able to impact uh, the government agendas? Uh, but maybe there is also a broader question on, and maybe the only channel that uh, the transnational movement uh, needs to impact on is not only uh, the government, the governmental agendas, and the existing institutions. So I wonder if you have. Um, comments on that? Uh, if you look uh, to the picture described in the opening lecture of uh, this afternoon, it's uh, 
a terrible one. No? There is uh, no possibility to change the situation. You have this uh, global environment made by this uh, incredible power of uh, financial flows and no political, uh, I'm not saying institution, no political dispositive able to intervene on these uh, terrifying uh, inequalities, on this uh, terrifying uh, unbalance of powers on global scale. So I think the main question we have to pose to ourselves is about uh, the effectiveness of uh, the different way in which uh, socially and politically movement, institutionally, and so on, we act. And aiding as uh, main objective that uh, we need to create the conditions uh, to reverse uh, this unequal balance in social powers. Uh, how, to, how to do that? Uh, I think that uh, it's impossible to do that uh, in one uh, appropriate way. We need to start uh, from uh, a plurality of impulses. I'm using uh, uh, impulses uh, because uh, last Sasson's book, so it's uh, expulsions, no? Like the, the dominant form of exclusion, the, monic the dominant form of implementing inequalities, and so on. So I think we need more impulsions. <laughs> uh, it means. Uh, uh, to give a plurality of impulses uh, to change this situation with the ability to act uh, on uh, different levels. In, in some aspects, uh, overcoming this idea that uh, we have uh, the space of social movement on one side, we have the trade unions, we have the political parties, we have the institution, and we have to build alliances or we have to connect uh, these uh, different levels. I think uh, that now, in, in this horrible situation, this is not enough. We need to make uh, a step forward. And step forward means uh, to think and to act uh, the plurality of the impulses uh, as uh, the necessary approach uh, we have to have to build uh, hybrid spaces. This is the reason why, for example, Podemos' experience is interesting. Because uh, it's experience coming from the movement, uh, from the social movement of the plazas, uh, and uh, acting as institutional subject, acting as representative subject. And what I think is, in this moment, uh, very interesting in Podemos' experience are the next uh, municipal election. As uh, we see in Barcelona, you have uh, a coalition involving Podemos, but also many other different uh, actors uh, that uh, likely could elect as major Ada Colau, the woman leader of the Plataforma por lo, de los Afectados para la Hipoteca, the movement about the problem of uh, more change. No? And what is interesting in the Greek experience of Syriza is not that sometime old-fashioned way of radical uh, left uh, rhetoric and so on, but the fact uh, that uh, the likely electoral victory of Syriza in, in Greece 
came from a lively fabric of self-organized activities, self-managed health services, cooperatives, occupied and self-managed factories. This kind of hybrid configuration of the space of possible radical transformation is that we need in this moment. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe to build on that, uh, on the question of hib hybrid spaces, because I think that's one of the in interesting points that you mentioned, is that uh, action is not only needed in one, one scale or in one form, but that we need to build these hybrid spaces where action is possible and where it opens up new uh, roads to um, decision making or to like uh, applying new formats for democracy. Um, well, some of, in a way, uh, a hybrid space uh, that is something that also mixes uh, cultural, uh, artistic, intellectual, and educational aspects. And I wonder um, if you could tell us a bit more about uh, your experience of that, Igor, uh, through uh, the Subversive Festival, the Balkan Forum, and through the different type of mobilizations you've been invo involved in. Uh, maybe I sounded a bit uh, um, um, not as enthusiastic as I am about actually bottom-up and grassroots movements and occupations and so on. This is something I'm totally excited, but I wanted to also uh, 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 just, you know, preempt uh, as a pre preemptive strike just uh, to 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 uh, um, um, to reject to reject criticism that I'm a naive leftist and so on who believes that things could <laughs> come from you know occupations and and everyday democracy, 24-hour whatever uh, assemblies and plena and so on and so on. No. But I do believe that these these places do have a potential that part, you know this this kind of situation where particular speaks for the universal you know in a way uh, Teatro Valle speaks for bene comuni yeah, for public goods we all know that occupying that space it was much more than just theater <laughs> it was much more than occupying theater similar thing happened in Croatia with student movement that occupying university or at actually one faculty not really the the whole university spoke for something much, much bigger. So there was this particular struggle that everybody that changed somehow the whole society in a way that you can start talking about certain issues such as education, public goods, what kind of society we want. And you can, from this uh, uh, position, then criticize what you have, which is neoliberal global society, global capitalism, or uh, capitalism at the local level, which was not possible, especially not in post-socialist Europe so openly. So I truly believe in these, this uh, hybridity. Uh, uh, on the other hand, to go back to the fact that, you know, I'm not a naive leftist who is also thinking about big issues that cannot be uh, solved at, 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 uh, by, by autonomous small initiatives, is the question of uh, the, the problem you, you mentioned. We are facing a situation that is a situation of humanitarian crisis. So it's not only it's not only how they frame it, okay, people are, live at risk of poverty, some are poor, uh, societies are in recession or crisis. Let's see how, what's happening with the resilience. That's EU likes this resilience, how resilient you are in this situation. No, we are facing humanitarian crisis at, at enormous level. Those are millions and millions of people who have been affected. So basically, in order to solve this problem, we come again to the problem of state. Yeah? You need instruments that could somehow solve this problem. And uh, this, would this will require an enormous political effort to be able to capture the state, to tax people, uh, to tax the rich. I mean, if you just want to remain within this sort of Piketty-esque kind of uh, uh, suggestions, which of course uh, 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 are not or at least he doesn't want to portray them as very radical. But uh, I, I, also, uh, I also think that actually they are radical because he is just copying their uh, com communist manifesto who has a couple of three first steps, which is taxation and, and uh, 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 the revision of the right of inheritance and so on. So all the things that he's talking about are already in the communist manifesto. But 
maybe this could be done without be, being called a revolution, although you know, taxing the rich at that level and stopping the rent economy to go on and on and taxing the financial trans tra transactions will be a revolution. And for that, you need people who are ready to die for that. Because this is not an issue just taking power at the elections and then, inc then start taxing these guys. These guys are not going to give up on their power or on their richness or their wealth. And they're not going to give up on the society they built for themselves. Of course, that translates, as we know, as socialism for the rich and capitalism for all, all the others. So maybe um, if we speak about the like critical situation we're in, um, and uh, well, next, well, one of, one of the topics where that has been discussed uh, during these last days, and that is coming up high in the international agenda uh, in the next year, is the question of uh, climate change and the goals of cl on climate change. Uh, I know that there are uh, many mobilizations that are um, prepared for that and that are going on. Um, can maybe maybe one? Well, I know Bepe. May, maybe you have uh, some comments on how um, you think some a transnational mobilization uh, on this topic in particular could be efficient, and what kind of steps should be taken, and how the. Uh, collaborations between the different uh, scales and different movements can happen because one knows that uh, the, the the local scale is very strong on the question of uh, climate change all the mobilization to uh, get local vegetables uh, like ensure the sustainability at the local scale and at the global scale that there are big movements uh, and like discussing that so maybe you have uh, some comments on that I think that uh we have uh, two opportunities in the next uh, coming year, in 2015, to experiment uh, such kind of hybrid space, uh, uh, plurality practices uh, we are talking about. The first opportunity is uh, in the first quarter of uh, 2015 is the mobilization uh, in Frankfurt around uh, the opening, nobody knows, uh, the opening ceremony involving uh, all the chief of state, uh, chief of government all over Europe uh, of the new Euro Tower, European Central Bank uh, skyscraper uh, in Frankfurt. And uh, that space, uh, the space uh, of uh, Block Upai Alliance, uh, is the space uh, fit uh, to discuss uh, the issues of global finance, uh, of uh, fiscal compact uh, and financial policies uh, on European scale, and uh, the issue of uh, inequality in our political and social European space. It means uh, the issue of democracy. The second opportunity is uh, in the last quarter of 2015. And is the opportunity of uh, Paris summer on climate. That is the opportunity to set in the agenda of European social movements uh, the issue of climate change uh, that uh, until 2009 and uh, with the beginning of the social effects of crisis uh, is no more is no more in the agenda of uh, european social movements it seems that climate change uh, is a problem of uh, Heinrich Böll Stiftung, um, Grün, uh, Grünen or the Green uh, European Party, not uh, a social problem. This is, uh, a, I think, a big contradiction also in the anti-austerity movement. To be too much focused on uh, economic, financial, issues uh, and not uh, connecting the ecological crisis uh, 
to the financial crisis. The summit in Paris, I think, is this kind of opportunity to rebuild a strong link between the ecological crisis and the global financial crisis as two faces of the same system crisis and also two faces of the same inequality and democracy problem. Because outside Europe, sometimes we have also to learn what happened outside Europe. We often don't imagine how many experience of struggle on climate change issue are in North America, in South America, in Africa, in Asia. Uncomparable with uh, the lack uh, in the European situation. And we have uh, to start again this ability to connect uh, a, a radical critic of system. It's not a problem of only of uh, change a little bit uh, the energy policies. It's a problem uh, to change completely the logic of the system and starting again with these issues of ecological crisis and how to develop uh, an idea of an ecological uh, common to be built, to be self-managed, to be matter of uh, democratic radical self-government. Okay, it's a big program. Um, I was uh, I was going to open the round of discussions to the room. I don't know if there are questions. Um, yeah, there is a question there on the on that on the other side. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Igor, as the Balkan expert. Um, when asked for um, movements, maybe inspiring movements, you didn't actually mention the Bosnian plenum movement. <laughs> so I would like to know, I mean, it was a grassroots, democratic, self-organized um, movement. And of course, it had the problem that was mentioned um, of not wanting to be contaminated with politics. So. Um, it didn't turn into a party or something similar, and it also apparently lost momentum <laughs> uh, rather quickly, at least that's how it seems like from the outside. So I wanted to know, um, is it still somehow existent and in what way, and did it somehow um, play any role in the context of the um, Bosnian elections, for example, or in any, any other way? Thank you. Uh, I'll give a maybe a brief overview of this. Uh, yeah, it is interesting that I didn't mention, although although in a way I participated in it and I do support it uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, and I and I said in many ma many uh, places that this was something that was a unexpected radicality that happened in a place that I'm sure none of you, uh, uh, even I who and I come from Bosnia, wouldn't ever look for this radicality. So it was as surprising to me as it was to anybody else. So especially the fact that that protest, of course, and the eruption of rage, this is nothing unusual, but that that, that then turned into this citizens' assembly was a really example of, of uh, radicality that we didn't see elsewhere. That suddenly there was almost a pre-revolutionary situation where the number of governments, uh, municipal, cantonal, uh, were, were, were just uh, re resigning and there was a, a moment where, um, where at least we hope, and I still hope, that I, not that I hope, but I know, that it was a moment of birth of a social movement. Now, what is the problem with that? How do you uh, transform this energy of a social movement into a political force? And that, this is where you hit the wall of, number one, the, the constitutional structure of the country, uh, number two, of the fact that something that is so spontaneous will necessarily have a heterogeneous element in, in it. It was a ra radical, although people who were part of that were not people who would necessarily identify themselves as leftist or radical or anarchist or whatever. What I found very interesting is that they adopted almost naturally this kind of anarchist form of self-organization, which was a, 
um, immensely important and wonderful and, and, and inspiring. Uh, on the other hand, what activists, uh, people who were, uh, who were in the plenums and active in, in what was happening around, basically encountered immediately was this problem, how do you solve the situation that was the cause of this eruption of the rage, which is poverty. I mean, literally people who lost jobs, who live on, on less than 100 euro per month with, with families, and who would then come to, to people like myself or like people... Uh, uh, um, the, in Tuzla or in other other places, activists who are also, you know, who write, who are academics, who are publicly engaged in civil society. And they asked them for help. They said, well, okay, I understand what you are talking about, that we are here, here reinventing democracy and that this is very progressive, but do you, can you give me 10 euros now? Now, I need it now, today, because I have to feed my children and so on and so on. Or I cannot come to your protest because I live in a, in a village and I need five euros. Can you give this to me? And of course, you, maybe you can do it one day, but you are not state. You are not agency or whatever who can actually distribute, uh, who can actually uh, uh, heal these problems or uh, change the social situation. So this is what, what happened there and what is happening uh, in many other place, places. Bosnia is very complex, therefore everything was uh, uh, quite difficult to take to any other level. And the result is elections came and pretty much for like the, the last time nothing really changed. This, this whole energy uh, find, found hard time to translate itself into any kind of formal organization within the system as it is, and people who were on the streets went back to apathy. But as I said, it was the beginning of a movement, and uh, again, it is very uh, uh, difficult. It is easy for me, coming from Edinburgh, to tell them, be patient, Building a movement is like 10, 15 years, you know, just we, we have to continue. This is really great, but it's quite hard to, to actually find yourself in the situation where change might eventually come um, after a very long struggle. Is there any other question? have no uh, question very short uh, thank you very much for the goal uh, you have and I just want to make a small contribution I am a minority among ma many minorities in Europe but I'm special minority I'm Muslim makes a big difference because Muslims have become the new Jews in in the last time I just want to make something uh, this is my contribution if I am excluded I will be Muslim if I am included, I will not be Muslim. I will be European, I will be German, I will be American. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, there is a question from Saskia Sass in the back. Hi, thank you very much for the, the talks. I just want to use you right now, both of you. And I would like to, I know you work on particular domains, etc., and you, 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 mentioned two very different, Bipi, you said one thing, you know, and sort of there is a difference there that is interesting. If you were part of, and maybe you are, of course, I think you are, Alternative Europe, what are some of the steps, I'm thinking pragmatically, that you think can be taken now? And by, by steps, I mean something that makes babies, so to say, you know, that goes beyond the little intervention. Eh? Like what you said about... Um, ¿Cómo se llama este en, en, en España? Podemos. Podemos, Podemos. Right, you know, how that sort of step by step, but there was a project and there was an opportunity, you know, sort of a marriage of the two. So I'm just thinking very practically, given the, the kind of uh, issues that were discussed earlier also. Just tell us, both of you. Not at the same time. Um, trying, to <laughs> trying to answer, but uh, I have no hand. Uh, I, I start declaring I have no answer. But uh, trying to answer, uh, I, I want also to start with this last comment. Because, uh, of course, Europe is our uh, social and political space of action, the possible space uh, also for a radical transformation, for constituent process from below and so on. But we have not to be Eurocentric. Uh, 
in this process. No? Uh, what that means? Like for a, with an example, there is something happening at the borders of uh, defined Europe uh, that uh, is in this moment, uh, I think, really stimulating uh, the attempt to answer your question. Is the experience uh, of the Kurdish region of uh, Rojava. It's I think it's really interesting because uh, people coming from uh, very Marxist, uh, orthodoxical tradition of uh, Leninist guerrilla in the mountain, like the PKK, the Kurdish uh, Party of the Workers uh, of Abdullah Shalan, was able to develop uh, something uh, extraordinary new. Was able to develop uh, a real experiment uh, in the most difficult situation, in a situation of war, in a situation of civil war, in a situation of civil war with uh, several regional powers uh, acting openly or not openly, to develop uh, a project and the concrete experience uh, of uh, self-government on radical democratic communitarian basis uh, with uh, a very advanced discourse uh, on the women's role, with uh, a capacity of manage a plurality of uh, different population, different uh, ethnicities, uh, different uh, religions, uh, different cultures, uh, and uh, governing this plurality, opening a space uh, that uh, until some time ago, we didn't have in the Middle East. And the only space that in this moment is able to challenge the brutal dimension of the war in the Middle East. So this is the reason why I think we need also a new narrative. Uh, our counterparts uh, have a strong narrative, or have different strong narrative. Populists uh, acting against the European space have their strong narrative. Uh, Merkel government, the oligarchs of the European Central Banks have their own a narrative. It's, uh, I think, uh, too many years uh, that our part uh, from below have no, no, their own narrative. The, the discourse of uh, uh, anti-globalization movement, another word is possible, was the last narrative we had. After that, nothing. And we need uh, this kind of new narrative uh, to use it uh, to rebuild uh, a kind, I'm using a, an old uh, Gramscian concept, no? to, to rebuild uh, a kind uh, of uh, social block uh, starting from the present social fragmentation, starting from the present uh, social individualization. We need that. A, that can be the starting point of uh, the answer. Uh, thank you, Saskia, for asking. Me. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll, I'll have pragmatic, very pragmatic. I, I agree with most of what you said. It sounds as a work, a lot of work. Yeah. What, what you are asking is would be what to do now, I, I think. For instance, what could be done? And, and um, I would see this as not as first revolutionary measures, but maybe as first pre-revolutionary measures. That would be some kind of a combination of, uh, of uh, experiments with horizontality and movements so that you have movements that do include horizontality where Kurdish case might be quite, quite inspirational and of course Zapatistas and of course different, different uh, 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 direct democratic experiments but that it, it, it is combined with some kind of uh, party organization. 
and that could then go also and now this might sound strange to, to people who know me and I, I was mostly on the, for the argument's sake saying uh, forget about institutions we don't want this we all bottom up and only bottom up uh, but of course uh, I am pragmatic in this this respect that you have s some sort of a party structures that do not that won't be traditional parties but that will go through the institutions without forgetting without taking uh, uh, out the whole uh, horizontality uh, uh, moment that will be channels for the articulation of the movements. So the new parties, new idea of a party that will definitely be a channel for the movements and then be an agent of the movements within uh, uh, legal structures of power. And there I think that, that, that something can be done and starting from municipal level, start, starting from local elections towards the national elections where you can show in, in a relatively short period of time quite concrete changes so i think that this is what we need and then building up upon these examples and also building up on our failures let's not forget that uh, building a, a maybe maybe a new model and sort of some kind of a democratic renewal may i ask a precision that uh, igor would you mean that uh, what we need is something new like new political parties like podemos in a way or it's uh, reinvesting or trying to reinvest uh, the old um, uh -huh, right. static yeah, uh, yeah. political well, parties. A new organization of the, of the parties, yeah? I mean, in a way, when I say party, I'm thinking about where, where you have an executive body to whom you will give some power to do something. But if they don't do it, they are out. But the channels for movements are very important. So the question is, with the old parties, can they be reformed? I'm not sure there. I'm really not sure. And then the, the question will be Podemos. Will Podemos or Syriza become this new party that is a channel for, for the energy that is coming directly from society? Uh, uh, we will see that. They might face the organizational problems and then uh, go back to old, old solutions. Uh, question of, of how effective your political organization is. It's all very nice to have a, the most democratic organization possible, but if it's not effective, then we have the same problem and we are back into the same, uh, same old, old story. Yeah? Okay, thank you. There was a question here. Yeah, there are two questions actually. I th maybe we can take the two questions, uh, three in a row. Uh, it's not a question, but I want to mention something. Although I haven't spoken English uh, many years ago, I want to mention the notice which you remember about being Eurocentric. And I think it's the time now to find really a lot of space and a lot of time to discuss this dangerous problem. It belongs now to the daily life to be Eurocentric. And it's not only in one level and in one section and in one branch of the life in Europe. It's also not the speciality of one country uh, or, for example, uh, culture centers or academical centers. It's a problem which, face, which faces the people in the daily life. And the future can be very, very dark if we don't find the necessary time to discuss this problem. Thank you. Thank you. There was a question just behind you. Hello, my name is Gürkan from Istanbul. I would like to ask a practical question regarding the social movements of the recent years. In whether we like it or not, we have grown up or we have got accustomed to consumerist culture. And in this culture, we have had disappointments. So uh, at some point, we have taken to streets. In the streets of Istanbul, Sofia, or Sarajevo, and many other cities around the world, where the social movements have not turned into political parties or did not have uh, immediate political outcomes. Podemos is a different example, of course, but it comes from a different set of culture as well. So in this consumerist culture, the millions that have taken to streets, having not seen any immediate outcome, any positive outcome, have got frustrated and many of them have been depressed. In Istanbul, I can see this, that there are millions of people just around 
that do not smile in a day. What do we do about that? Are there any suggestions? Next question. How you, you want us to collect questions? Or do we have another one? Ah, okay. You want to? Yeah. Front, yeah. Uh, a short question to Igor. Um, do you know the, the famous sentence, uh, old wine in new pipes from the 19th century? And we also hear in, in, in the room of uh, Böll Stiftung and about more than 30 years ago, also the Green Party developed from the movement and what is the result? And also in Europe, you can see what's happened when Manuel Barroso coming from the revolutionary area and then uh, his de development or also in Germany, Josh Joschka Fischer and so on. Uh, it's always since the 19th century the same problem. Uh, what can we do now for this uh, many experiences? Thank you, thank you for this because I think these examples are are really um, um, we are painfully aware of them. <laughs> and this is this is again one of our problems that we are really aware of the f of the fact where the Green Party, from where they they where they were and from where they went after that, and we are also aware of of, of, of people like Barroso, uh, who would change, um, clearly change, change completely during their careers. Uh, interestingly enough, of course, uh, I wonder now, I'm asking myself this question, uh, the, the context change, what helped them to convert to, to neoliberalism, uh, was the the de delegitimization of socialist project, as you know, it was starting much more uh, before the fall of the wall, uh, and not to mention after '89. So it somehow it made it easier for them to convert and to be Democrats and neoliberals and completely embrace capitalism. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm maybe that wouldn't have been possible had the Greens or the, 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 the movements that came after after the 70s, 60s and 70s in Germany remained progressive movements yeah, and remained active uh, 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 the way they used to be. Now, this is a question. We don't know, we don't know uh, the answer to this. Uh, this is why I said temporary measures in a way because I'm also distrustful of, 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 of hierarchical structures. They have a life on their own. Uh, but for some sort of uh, practical solutions or some, some kind of results, uh, we would need much better organization. <laughs> and, this is, uh, and we will need some victories. And this, this is why, as a remedy for this uh, desperation, and for, for a remedy for this, uh, uh, as Neruda said, uh, organization of misery yeah, that's been all around us, and this is a typical thing. They know, you know, I mean, in Istanbul with so millions of people, it, it, it looked like a revolution it was around the corner. Uh, and of course, it didn't happen. There are many, many ways to fight a revolutionary waves or, or, or somehow uh, subversive waves. And then after that comes despair, melancholy, and, and further fragmentation. We saw all of that. So the enemy is quite strong, has very clear agenda. Uh, has a lot of uh, uh, logistical support to break, even by the means of heavy violence, anything that could that could endanger it. So we will, we might need to find um, concrete answers to this. And this is why I mentioned concrete organizational answers and concrete actions that will bring examples that could be emulated. Then, uh, Kurdish case is very inspirational. Very inspirational. Uh, of course, the question is to see where it will go. It, it, it happened in, in a, under uh, very concrete circumstances. Of course, uh, the idea of democratic confederalism that starts from, from below, it's, it's, it's a brilliant one and has to be implemented, and hopefully will be implemented in many other places. On the other hand, uh, the, 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 this is not... The, the whole system did not take the function of the state. There is still, especially in Turkey, yeah? so there is still state. So you do parallel structures almost that come out of society. What is 
interesting and very subversive that in, 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 in democratic conf confederalism is this sort of that the state as such might not be necessary, especially in national struggles of, of oppressed minorities. That you don't need to conquer state, and especially what, what I find the most important is that territory as such is not so important. Borders, so clear delineation of a nation state or of a state against the others, that, that it could just spread, spread across the borders uh, which they show. So in a way, these examples are, interesting, are, are helpful. It is helpful to, to, to like look at Zapatista's example, but still we don't have an alternative. And for that, we will, we will need a lot of organizations struggle. And again, what, uh, uh, what I mentioned, and maybe a, a bit more dramatically, people who are ready to die for this, who are really ready to fight and die for this, like people were ready to fight and die for revolutionary, revolutionary uh, changes. Only a sentence. I don't think that uh, history, also the history of the relation between social movements and political parties, uh, uh, can be done uh, with uh, conspiracy theories uh, or uh, traitors uh, theory. It's not your case, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, are very simple, very easy uh, self-justification. No? Uh, I think there is a, an old German slogan coming from the 20s and the 30 years, uh, and we know how the history has gone. Wer hat uns verraten? Who are the traitors? Uh, no? I think it's not so easy to explain history and to explain uh, victories uh, and uh, defeats. Uh, it's every time something uh, that has much more to do with uh, social concrete forces. Also with subjectivity. And subjectivity is even more and more important. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, finally, that uh, around uh, the multitudes uh, of people involved uh, in uh, building uh, social alternatives, uh, there is uh, much more uh, creativity than uh, desperation. And we need to apply this creativity to all the possible form of political organization, uh, to all the possible form of uh, inventing uh, new form of struggle, a new form of struggle traducing our claims uh, in successes. Thanks a lot for these uh, more hopeful words. Uh, in order to close uh, the debate, um, I, 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 I would just like to ask, to, to remind two key terms that were in the, in, well, no, one term that was in the label of the panel is there. Uh, it's transnational, because we've spoken a lot of local examples, or examples that have been able to uh, kind of uh, go into the national scale. Um, but maybe um, as closing remarks, uh, you'd li you, you would have some something to say about transnational collective action and how that can maybe help, inspire, support. I think in many cases, uh, like giving a voice to uh, some um, struggles. Uh, we've been discussing so much of about Hungary recently, but maybe uh, finding ways to support the Hungarian NGOs that are fighting against their government would already be a useful form of transnational collective action in Europe. Um, and uh, the second word I would like to reintroduce is uh, culture, because we've been speaking about social movement, political movement, uh, but we've but as uh, um, uh, this man <laughs> is certainly here uh, rightly pointed out, um, it left outside of the discussion a big part of the population that is not too interested or appealed by the social mobilization or political discussion. So how can that be used to trigger um, hope, movement, and uh, change? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, for briefly, if, 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 if this can be done briefly, on transnational. I mean, every, every, every one of these struggles that, that uh, we want to call emancipatory, or that, that I would call emancipatory in a sense that they speak to everybody. They could not be emancipatory just for my group, for my state, for my nation, for, uh, uh, for, 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 for my religion or whatever. It has to be. If it's emancipatory, I think we are in the business of here of, of emancipatory uh, 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 potentials and, and, and acts. It has to speak to everybody, and therefore it has to be transnational. In a way uh, that, again, as I said, uh, Teatro Vale open up a question of common goods, which is a transnational issue. This is not only and cannot only be state issue. Ah, if the question of water, well, cer cer certainly it's a shared problem. Question of of what is social good that somebody should protect, or what is public good, what is common good, and why we need. Uh, uh, to expand the territories uh, uh, of these common and shared goods against privatization. So it has to be transnational. Uh, uh, in a way, I'll come back to these sort of particular struggles that open up actually alternatives. And there, th there I think uh, that there is a space, of course, for culture and art. Uh, I, uh, there was a lot of... Um, I, I was also resisting all the time my Deleuzean impulses, but Beppo was here to to push it forward, and we didn't mention desire as well, uh, is a more positive, is a struggle against despair. And, and uh, uh, certainly Negri wrote a lot about this, and um, I think we can find an insp inspiration there. But on the other hand, I would also br uh, 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 bring uh, Rancière here, and his you know, power of the aesthetical, of the aesthetics, to actually open up new spaces of what can be said, done, think, and so on. And I think this is also something we, we should we should take into account that culture does have this power, or culture or art do have, or even literature do have this this power. Now the we'll we'll come to the question in which, and I I strongly believe that there is no art or no culture that is just individual or for individual consumption. It is collective. It's been born out of collective experiences, and it speaks to collective experiences. This is where it also has. Uh, uh, emancipatory potential. I think that we are in a situation in which we cannot really afford ourselves uh, discussions whether we one model is better or the other, or the one activity or the other, or we, should we concentrate only on economics or actually on mostly he hegemonic or, and cultural, cultural part. We need everything. In a way, to bring about change that I think, I mean, if the direction of change is shared here, the sense of direction where we want to go. We need uh, both economics, both of these cultural hegemonic, uh, counter-hegemonic interventions. We need festivals, we need uh, 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 reading groups that will read whatever they want to read for another 10 years, but everything has to uh, be in a parallel. Uh, uh, in a way, we will need these citizens' assemblies and movements and parties and scholars and writers in order... <laughs> to push things forward in and also first as a defense of what is coming and you just mentioned a couple of examples what is already there so even we need all of this as a defensive mechanism before we move it into counter offensive I, I give you a, a more short uh, and uh, more uh, practical focused answer to your two question first with an example I think that uh, an experience like uh, Subversive Festival in Zagreb had uh, a little finger in producing a subjectivity of young people in all the Balkans, in all the southeastern part of Europe, uh, able to be protagonist uh, in uh, Maribor, like uh, in Ljubljana, in uh, Bosnia, in all... Uh, this uh, social movement coming, social riots, uh, insurgencies uh, coming uh, from below in the Balkans in the last uh, years. That means uh, that there is no possible distinction between uh, the level of uh, alternative cultural intervention and uh, the contemporary forms of politics from below. Second answer is about... Uh, uh, transnationality. 
I think that uh, uh, imagine all the forms of movement, social struggles uh, we discussed until now here as based on a, a national space uh, is simply suicidal. Simply suicidal. You go nowhere. Also, when these struggles, these social movements are deeply rooted in local contradiction, in national problems, uh, in specific uh, uh, local situation, they have to assume immediately a transnational perspective. Uh, on the contrary, they have no possibility to find uh, a possible perspective. Okay, thanks a lot. So on these uh, final remarks, I think we're going to close this day and close the Fix Europe campus uh, and the conference day. So thank you, uh, Igor and Beppe, for your time, uh, for the speakers of today. Thank you very much. Uh, the amazing team of uh, European Alternatives and of the local group of Berlin. <laughs> and uh, thanks for... Heinrich Bosch Stiftung to have hosted this debate again and be partner. And uh, yeah, there is some food downstairs, I think. <laughs>